Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to dive into a Python library that I came across randomly while reading some articles. Uh, that library is called TyPy. So TyPy is a powerful library designed for data visualization, dashboards, and uh, AI apps, uh, and is very similar to Streamlit. Uh, that I've talked about a lot uh, on my channel, if you've been following me. So I went through the documentation and experimented a bit uh, with the library. And I wanted to walk you through a quick overview of the various components uh, that you can use with TypeI and how to implement them. So let's get right into it. All right. So what you're seeing here is actually a TypeI app uh, that is run locally on my desktop. Uh, I have created a Python file uh, containing all the TypeI components and run it through an Anaconda console. So first of all, of course, you will have to install the TypeI library uh, and import it into your code. Within the TypeI GUI module, we'll, you will find the uh, GUI method, uh, which will be used to actually launch the app uh, alongside the run function. You also have the TypeI GUI uh, builder module, which we will call TGB from now on. Uh, that contains all the TypeI elements to develop the app. So the main logic to understand here is pretty simple. Uh, every TypeI element is going to be st uh, stored or called within a page element uh, that you call within uh, that you call with uh, tgb.page, which I just realized there's a typo here. So this actually create a page. You can, uh, of course, create multiple pages that you can store uh, after that within a dictionary that will be called into the GUI function uh, at the end. So once you have written all your code, uh, you can easily run or launch your app through a terminal or console with the type I run keyword and then uh, writing here your Python file. How do you write some text or titles in TypeI, you may ask. So in the TypeI GUI builder, there is a text function uh, which takes a string value as its first parameter. Great thing with this is it supports markdown syntax. So if you're familiar with it, you know how it easy it is to actually use. Uh, so for instance, we have here uh, a bold text uh, using the double asterisk or an italicized text that looks like this here or a h1 header that looks like this now if you want a more specific style to your text you can also use a css file and create a new style class for your desired styling uh, so for instance here i have created a css file in which i created a new class uh, called size 20 which uh, styles the text with a font size of 20 pixels. So to use this custom styling, I just have to use the class name parameter with the class name that I have created here, which creates a text with 20 pixels. Now for this to work correctly, uh, you must ensure that your CSS file has the exact same name as your Python file so that when you, uh, your app launches, it knows where to fetch the CSS file. So if your file has the my Python file uh, name, you must have the my Python file dot CSS uh, name for your CSS file. So here I have a, another example of a new class that colors the text into yellow and I use it uh, like so here in the class name parameter. Next section here is about user inputs. So basically how a user can interact with the various widgets that are configured in your app. Uh, first, we have some buttons uh, that can be accessed uh, with the TGP button uh, function. So natively, TypeI has six styles uh, of button that you can choose uh, depending on your needs and that you can configure with the uh, class name. So uh, you have a default one and then some additional ones. Now, again, all of these can be modified using a CSS file uh, if you want it to have a specific styling. As for value inputs, uh, there are four types of filters that you can use uh, and that work relatively uh, the same way. So you first have to initialize uh, a, a new variable 
uh, for the widget and then each time the user changes uh, the value of the input um, the variable is updated with the newly changed value so we have uh, a number input a text input you also have dates uh, and a date range we also have a wide range of selectors uh, that go from uh, segment and buttons that look like this uh, toggles sliders uh, drop down menu checkbox radio buttons and the classic selection box Again, all of these must first be initialized uh, for them to be used after. Finally, you also have uh, some file managers to either upload or download a file to or from the app. This section right here is for some extra elements uh, that are also available in TypeI that didn't really fit in uh, the other categories. So first you have a status widget uh, that allows the app to send some kind of information to the user uh, based on a progress or a task being executed. So natively, TypeI offers uh, four types of statuses. So you have an info status, success status, warning status, and an error status. Uh, you can also stack up uh, multiple statuses into one using a dictionary, and it will look like this. Next element here is a progress bar to show the evolution of a task that is uh, being executed, for example. So here I have added a slider uh, just to show you how the progress bar react. So if I go uh, up the slider, you can see that the progress bars are being updated. So this can be used again for a task uh, that is being executed to show how it is progressed. Uh, TypeI also supports a chat element that, of course, can be useful, namely for uh, integrating an LLM agent, for instance, or, uh, of course, other use cases. So, for instance, if I say hello, you have the uh, assistant here. So, of course, this was uh, manually encoded. This is not a real agent, uh, but you can use it for such uh, a use case. Lastly, here we have a navigation bar that can also be used for, uh, useful to lay out uh, multiple uh, elements within a page, but divided into sections. Uh, one cool thing here that I found is that you can also link to a website. Uh, like so here, I have linked uh, the Google Home page as a tab to the navigation bar. Last section we're going to see today here uh, in the type I overview is the creation of charts uh, and tables, of course, within your app. Uh, so to create a table, it's as easy as you see here. You just have to put a data frame into a TGB table object and it will display like this. So you have some filtering features like so here. You can also uh, display uh, a number of rows. So your typical uh, table widget. As for charts uh, and plots, TypeI has a TGB chart element that is pretty extensive in terms of options and styling uh, that you can configure. So here, for instance, I have created a line plot. Uh, you may recognize the uh, Plotly setup. Well, you are not wrong because it is actually Plotly that is run uh, in the back end. So we benefit from all the Plotly features uh, that it allows. So it is basically the same logic for a lot of the charts available. So you have here a scatter plot, a histogram, a bar plot here, a heat map. So you get the gist. You can also create some uh, very basic uh, maps with the scatter uh, geo chart type, uh, which can be useful for uh, useful for some instances. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty uh, very basic. Also, lastly, uh, if you're very familiar with the Plotly syntax uh, and don't want to deal with the TGB chart parameters, you can just directly in, uh, input a Plotly uh, defined chart or figure into the TGB chart and it displays a Plotly chart as is. So yeah, that is pretty much what I've gathered so far on this uh, TypeI library uh, that I just discovered. Uh, I feel like uh, a lot of the features are pretty similar to Streamlit, 
uh, for now, I wouldn't necessarily have a good reason to switch from Shrillnet to TaiPai, uh, but I guess it's always nice to have some uh, alternatives. Of course, I haven't explored all of the features that I've that are available in TaiPai, so I may uh, change my mind. Uh, also, apparently, TaiPai is very good when dealing with large data sets, which uh, Streamlits, uh, Streamlits sometimes uh, underperforms. So I might test out and compare uh, performances between both and see if this is true. But for now, that'll be it for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.